and welcome, and brothers and sisters. This, this is Adam with Parable of the Vineyard, and welcome you to uh, Kanye West, what you need to know. And joined here with Brother Justin at Christian Truthers. Brother, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you too, bro. Welcome, uh, I mean, uh, welcome everybody, and thanks for having me back on, brother. And uh, very, very important, uh, powerful, uh, huge topic. It may even be underestimated by the body right now. So very, uh, very glad that y'all brought us together to talk about this tonight or today. Yeah, same here, brother. Same here. It's uh, I, I missed you. So I'm, you know, it, it sometimes it takes something uh, a topic this important, you know, for for things Amen. to come back together. So, <laughs> anyways, um, you know, and I have to say, I honestly didn't even want to talk about this topic when when this started coming up, becoming mainstream news the last uh, couple weeks i really honestly wanted nothing to do with it um i could have cared less but we both started seeing the division in the body and we're seeing just this polar opposite going on we're seeing a crowd that's like all for them and just you know uh, encouraging and we're seeing you know another side that's like hey let's have just some discernment here let's uh let's see what's going on let's let's take a look at, at the fruits and and see what's going on here so this is what we want to do today is really not so much dig into the past but i think at the same time we have to at least understand what the past was because you know i mean let's be honest if you or i were an open openly satanic and all this kind of, people would need to to test us and to to see what our fruits and see if we had a true conversion and those kind of things so this is this is uh, what we're going to do today the focus is going to be on current stuff while we are going to bring up some things in the past as a reference this is really going to be a focus on what's going on right now so uh, i want to start off with a few scriptures and um kind of lead into what we're talking about here. So John 7, 24 says, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And so while a lot of us will pick out certain verses that says, you know, judge not, um, you know, if you read that entire passage, it actually does encourage us to judge with righteous judgment and judging by fruits. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I also want to read Matthew seven thirteen through 20. Uh, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. So we have to understand when the world embraces something, when you see the mass of people uh, going towards something, that's typically kind of a warning for us, like, hey, this this may not be, uh, because it says that many, and when we look at the definition of many, it means the most. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it. So again, um, just going with the masses is typically not what we need to be doing. Now, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You know, Satan knows what he's doing. He's not going to come to us uh, dressed in red with a pitchfork and, and you know, a tail. He's going to come to us as a, uh, as a messenger of light. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every tree bringeth forth good fruit. And we're going to talk a lot about this here in a little bit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth, for, um, bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And again, this is what Yeshua, our, our Messiah, told us, is that wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. So this, so when people, people are like, oh, you fruit inspector. Well, actually, we are called to be fruit inspectors. We're supposed to judge each other and know each other by our fruits, what is being said, what comes out of our mouth. And uh, that's something that we're going to be talking a lot about today. Uh, a couple more verses. Galatians 2, 9. You know, um, before I read this, a lot of people that are for believing that Kanye has a true conversion and those kind of things, I'm seeing like, hey, you know, they, they, they uh, give an example as Paul. They're like, hey, you know, Paul was a murderer and he's all, I agree, he was, he was a bad dude and he was totally converted. But here, let's, re let's read this real quickly and let's discern this. Galatians 2, 9 says, and when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So uh, let's look at this word perceive real quick because James, Cephas, and John had to perceive what was going on with Paul. Perceive means to become, to become aware of, know, or identify by means of the senses. 
to recognize, to discern, envision, and understand. So they had to discern that Paul was a changed man. And that's what we're going to talk about today is discerning, perceiving, and uh, again, taking a look at the fruits. And lastly, and I'm going to hand it over to Justin, uh, we've got quite a bit to go over today, is you know the Ezekiel 33 call, the watchman call. Almost all of us are called to be watchmen today. If we see danger, if we see something going on, it, it's our duty. So let me read this real quick, and I'm going to be quiet. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, and that's what we're going to do today, is we're going to warn. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but the blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou... You, son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. So this is uh, what we're going to be doing today. And um, yeah, Justin, uh, I'm going to hand it over to you, my brother. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And, and on this same um, idea, the biblical principle of using discernment and testing fruit, you mentioned uh, the apostles when they first encountered Paul. And that actually reminded me of Acts 9.26. Because it says that the apostles were actually afraid of Paul when they first saw him. It says, right. and when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples. However, they were all afraid of him, for they did not believe that he was a disciple. So uh, this is something that we're seeing the, the 12, the original disciples, the ones who walked with Messiah, they responded a very similar way to hearing the news that this man was now uh, on the right side of things and uh, working for the gospel they were afraid at first. And so um, not saying they were, they were afraid that the, the enemy would, would triumph over them how, uh, per se, but afraid that he was just a false, a false convert, a deceiver, something of that nature. So um, the question we have to ask ourselves is, do we have the same type of reasons the disciples had to ask the same type of questions, to have the same type of hesitancy towards Kanye, uh, considering not just uh, his past, but also what he's talking about and, and going through right now. Um, and the second thing we want to talk about, we're, we're going to go through quite a bit of stuff here, but uh, we will talk a little bit about his past, but only those things that actually are relevant. So, uh, yes, we can easily, anybody can go look up, uh, they can Google Kanye West satanic stuff, you know, and they'll, they'll find just as many pictures as they want of him participating in all kinds of strange uh, concerts and photo ops and all this stuff. That's true. And, and if someone's repentant of those things, then that, that's, you know, it's not something that we should focus too much on. However, if there's a distinct relevance to what exactly he was doing and how he was doing it and what he was saying that he was going to do in the future, if we need to, uh, if we can look at the things that he said he was going to do, uh, then they then they definitely apply to today, and we are seeing the application of uh, of the things he hinted at and was showing us beforehand now being applied today. So in that in that sense, we do need to look at some of those things. So the first thing that I wanted to ask everybody when I first heard about the news of this, you know, and um, Adam I Adam and I talked a little bit back and forth um, via text and just kind of you know he he was actually wondering what what are your thoughts about all this because. You know, I'm actually getting some really mixed feedback from people, uh, and not not just from like the general, you know, Christian public, but from people that we know and we care about and we have been worshiping with. And there's some some conflict there, you know. And um, you know, I'll, I'll let Adam, you know, tell tell us about his first, in, uh, you know, impression here. But for me, I've immediately went and watched all of his uh, his interviews, his most recent interviews. I watched the one he did with Beats One, uh, and we watched the one. I watched the whole one that he did with uh, what's the other guy? Um, I can't remember his name. There's one he did with Beats One, and one he did with Big Boys Neighborhood. The two biggest ones we're seeing right now. And I watched all of it, and I wanted to hear what comments he was making anywhere else on on you know online. And I can see right away why it would be so difficult for so many people, without question. Uh, um, despite the fact that um, it was within my discernment to to immediately say, hey, obviously there's an agenda here, uh, which we're about to talk about very first and foremost. Uh, despite that, I'm like, but listen to him. He sounds uh, pretty good. I mean, what, how do you feel about it, Adam? Yeah, I agree. Uh, and you said it well. Um, you know, I watched the same interviews too. 
again, I had no intentions of, of really getting into in, into any of this because I've been so detached from the music industry. I mean, uh, goodness, probably about six, seven years I've been detached from the mu music industry. So it's I'm so far removed from that from even caring about these these people and, and what they're doing and their all this kind of stuff. But you 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 said it yourself. Um, it was when people that were very close to us that I know have good discernment were being uh, kind of swept away with this. And um, that's when I'm like, my alarm bell started going on saying, you know, all right, who is this guy? Is, is he, is he truly converted? What's going on here? Um, is he preaching the truth? Uh, or is he leading people astray as the Pied Piper? So just like you, I watched tons of interviews and uh, what I'm going to be doing uh, today, kind of the, the biggest part I want to play today is there was that inter is that I don't know if it's at the Beats interview is the one that uh, was at his house in Montana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one I I watched very carefully and listened to his words, and because like a lot of people have said is like you know if he's truly converted we don't need to focus too much on the past which I did want to look into because I really didn't know I didn't know much too much about Kanye West uh, and I was actually very surprised at how much stuff he'd really done um you know with the, the statues and the I, I didn't even know they had a book where he changed uh, the, the you know the scriptures to, for his name uh, mm -hmm. i didn't know all that stuff so i was overwhelmed and i was really you know kind of concerned like like brothers and sisters like why wouldn't we have some concern here kind of like how we opened it up with with galatians 2 9 with uh and like you said the, the apostles at first were like uh you know who you know I don't know. I don't know about this guy until they discerned and they saw what was coming out of his mouth uh, to finally be like, hey, okay, this guy's legitimate. So that's what we wanted to do is like, hey, is this guy legitimate? And uh, there was quite a bit on that uh, that interview. And a lot of a couple of my brothers that watched that same interview, it kind of went right over the head. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think when people start listening to his music and start liking it, uh, they start becoming a respecter of person. And I think, you know, a, a layer of blindness kind of goes over. So we hope to, um, for those of you that have, you know, had some discernment and are questioning this, we're, you know, probably going to reinforce a lot of those things that you may already be aware of. And hopefully for some of you that uh, think he may be a, a true convert, we, we've got some things that we really, really want to share with you uh, for you to, uh, you know, take into consideration uh, when making a final decision whether to uh, follow the footsteps of this man uh, or uh, to go the other way and so that's kind of where we're at today amen amen and they are saying in the chat that there's a the video and audio are out of sync do you want to see if refreshing will fix that out there in the chat okay let me see here I think the audio is ahead of the video. If you, I don't know if you want to just push um, or see if we can do something. Let real me just quick. let me uh, let me close some of these tabs. Um, and uh, okay, we should be good now. Okay, all right. So it's interesting how when these type of topics come up, they, that that seem like they are very complicated, uh, and it, and it actually it actually can be very complicated if we forget the basics, right? The, we, we're, we have to be brilliant in the basics at all times. And so, you know, honestly, although I did go watch the interviews and I actually, I actually did want him to be, I want him to be a, a genuine uh, convert. I want him to be a genuine man uh, of Yah and I want him to uh, promote the true gospel. Um, but the first thing that, that was a huge red flag for me, which kind of surprised me that not many more have kind of picked up on this, is just the very fact that we know, all of us who have come through this journey of truth and have done lots of research and, and, and just really dug in for the last several years, we know that people don't make it onto the world stage on accident. They don't make it onto the world stage organically. Um, it's, not, um, it's not within the power of an individual to just drop an album and have the whole world accept it. In fact, when the whole world is re accepting something, that should actually give us pause. So the quest first question I wanted to ask everybody is to remember and ask ourselves, who is the God, the lowercase g, the God of this world? Uh, well, the scriptures tell us that the, the world has fallen into the power and the influence of Hasatan, the enemy. 
uh, John 12, 31 actually says, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. So he's talking about a time in the future when the prince of this world will be cast out. So right now we see his influence everywhere. There's lots of corroborating scripture here. We're going to go to 1 John 5, 19. We know that we are that we are of Yahuwah, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Another version says, the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. In Ephesians 2.2, 2, it tells us, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Again, just another huge allusion to the enemy's sway over the whole earth, specifically the air, which is interesting when we think about uh, air waves, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, last, I want to touch on John 14, 30. It says, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Uh, another version says, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming and he has no claim on me. So just, just 101 stuff um, we have to return to and remember that, Literally, the, the entirety of the media, of what we see and experience in the mainstream, uh, the entirety of what is supported and encouraged and promoted by the world is under the control of the enemy. These are not things that, are, that happen accidentally. These are things that are, uh, that are, that are planned and released on purpose. We, we know this. This is very, um, very common knowledge among those who have really done a truth or search. The next question I want to ask is who is known specifically to lead the earth astray through the use of music? And uh, again, uh, this touches on just a, 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 probably a thousand different uh, points of research that we've probably done, not just on this channel, but on many, many other channels. Um, starting off with just touching on Ezekiel 28, we don't have to pull it up, but the idea that uh, Lucifer himself was actually made out of musical instruments. Mm -hmm. We actually see him using his musical uh, deceptions in the first book of Adam and Eve. Um, he's, he's known for this. Um, we have uh, just hundreds of reports of artists coming out and talking about how they sold their soul to the devil. They say it both in uh, their lyrics and in their actual interviews where they're sitting down and being very direct and honest. Uh, speaking of which, this is just kind of a side note here, Kanye West right before his mental breakdown last year, uh, one of the last things he did was go on a freestyle rant, rant and say that he sold his soul to the devil. So we've seen a lot of that all through rock and roll, hip hop, everywhere. People saying they sold their soul to the devil in order to, uh, to achieve power, influence, fame, whatever. We see the same type of statements coming from celebrities in, the, in, in acting uh, and all other realms of entertainment. Um, Artists also have been known to claim they use automatic writing. So you, you can look up testimonies of, of famous rock stars who will say that they just were tripping on acid or, or drunk out of their mind or whatever, and they channeled some spirit, and the spirit told them what to write, and that's how they wrote X, you know, X Y, or Z song. Um, again, this isn't. I'm not going to be able. To, I'm not going to sit here and provide all the details of this stuff. This is stuff that you got. You guys already know. At least you should already know. And if you don't, then there's a lot of research ahead of you to get caught up. Uh, we know about backwards masting, right? How the industry has um, historically in, in, uh, implanted hidden messages within music that are backwards, and you can't, you don't hear them when they're played forward necessarily. But it's one of the tenets of the Church of Satanism and Anton Lavey to do everything backwards. And so the music industry has adopted that that principle and applied it to their records. And you can play some of these some of this music backwards and hear very clear satanic messages coming from all different realms of the industry, pop, rock, rap, it doesn't even matter. It's everywhere. You can even find it in some of the speeches of politicians. Um, and then if you guys haven't seen the testimony, I can't remember where exactly uh, it was posted. I'll have to find it later and put it in the chat for, or link in the comments below later. But if you guys can recall, there's this, this uh, understanding that for the longest time during a period of rock and roll, the 80s and 90s, and maybe it still continues today, they would actually take the master, the, uh, the, the basically the key record, the master record, the one that will be used to make all the other records of a new album, and they would actually take it up into the Freemasonic headquarters at MTV, which we will show you a picture of uh, in, in a minute here, 
and they would actually perform a ritual over the master and dedicate the master and, and, and they would ask uh, spirits to go into the master and use it to influence the, the country and the kids and the families across the United States with, with the album. Um, so this is coming from, the, from testimonies of people who are inside the industry and came out of the industry. Um, so that's just the question I have to ask. Who owns the music industry? I'm not, gonna, I'm not specifically pointing out anything about Kanye right now, but the idea is first who owns the world? And then who owns the music industry? Uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about right now the big three, for example. We have Sony, Time Warner, and Universal, otherwise known as IMG uh, Media. And uh, yeah, right there, that's actually the, you're seeing on the screen, Lucian Grange is actually the CEO of, um, of Universal Media, which is who Def Jam Records, which Kanye West is signed under, uh, Def Jam Records is actually owned by Universal Media. The CEO of Universal Media is heavily tied back into the uh, the ro British royal family. If you uh, Adam, Adam, actually, if you scroll down to the bottom there, I think um, maybe it's in the awards or uh, I think it's an awards section or something like that near the bottom. Okay. Honors and achievements. Uh, uh, let's see. Go up a little bit. Yeah, he was okay. So here we go. Uh, second paragraph right there, Grange was appointed commander of the Order of the British Empire in the 2010 New Year's Honor for Services. Uh, see, he was um, appointed a British business ambassador by the UK Prime Minister, and he was knighted in the 2016 Birthday Honors for Services to British Business. So when you have someone connected back to the royal family, again, uh, we're, we're not going to lay that out for you in this video. That's stuff that you guys should already know by now. And if you don't, then start jumping into looking at why we would say it's uh, bad business to be uh, controlled by the royal family. Uh, the point I'm making is not that Kanye hangs out with Prince William or anything like that. That's not the connection I'm trying to make. I'm trying to remind everybody of who really owns everything in the sphere of music. There's only three major labels they own all the smaller labels including Def Jam Records who Kanye released with and the most recent record right the uh, Jesus yeah. is King okay this is King is released under Def Jam Records and we're going to look at some of the other artists Def Jam actually you can pull them up right now um, there's a website on Ranker uh, that talks about it shows all the different artists that are currently signed under Jeff Def Jam Records so and again, why am I why am I bringing this up? Why am I saying this? To so, demonstrate that you you it's not about uh, Kanye can't organically just decide he wants to up and talk about Jesus, and then get past Universal, get past Apple, get past ABC, get past all these uh, ones that control completely control and manipulate our media, and just do whatever he wants and talk about Jesus because he feels like it. Obviously, they have they have given their blessing. They're allowing this to occur. They're putting him on bigger and bigger uh, shows. So um, what were you going to say, Adam? No, I'll just say, what am I looking for here on Ranker? Oh, maybe that's the wrong link. Can you scroll down a little bit? Is it not right? Maybe that's the wrong link here. I'm sorry. There's a list of all the different artists. Oh, there's a link in the in the document. Did you see it? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. It's all good. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> There you go. It's all good. So here's a list of the other artists on Def Jam Records. This is who Jesus is King was published through, okay? Um, there's hundreds. We're not going to have time to go through all of them, obviously. But take a look. You probably recognize some people from your past life. Uh, you know, 112, uh, Ashanti, uh, a bunch of, bunch of rappers, a bunch of gangster rappers. Um, there you go. Beastie Boys, Big Crit, Big Sean. Uh, this is the worldliest of the worldly. They primarily promote hip hop um, albums, and many of the, these artists have put out all kinds of 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 satanic and borderline satanic stuff. This is what is usually going down at Def Jam Records. This is what they normally produce and pay for and promote is all of this stuff, right? It just goes on and on. In fact, Kanye, I think he's all the way down at 104. Uh, on the list here, but unfortunately, you guys might recognize some of these these old artists. There you go, 103 Kanye West. So you're seeing that in order for someone to drop 
a Jesus is King album that does nothing but praise and promote Jesus, you got to get permission, not just from, uh, from uh, Def Jam Records, but also from who Def Jam Records is owned by, right, which is Universal Media. And there's, they have a very tight grasp and a very tight grip on what they are putting out to, to the world. And they have a very good timing on it. And they have, of course, an agenda. You can see how the different forms of, of music that they evolved through the 1900s have also created an evolution of society influencing people the way they think, what they believe, how they feel. Um, this is something that is, we, we should be aware of already, right? The music industry at large is completely consumed and controlled by the big three and by the world, by the prince of the power of this world specifically. Um, so let's go to some more recent stuff. You, okay, you don't want to pick on Def Jam Records, okay? Even though I guess Def Jam, Def Jam just randomly decided that they wanted to start, start preaching the gospel all of a sudden, and their bosses and bosses' bosses were okay with that all the way back up to the royal family. That's fine. That's part of the agenda, I guess. It's fine for them to just preach the gospel. All right, uh, let's go on next to um, Jimmy Kimmel. I want to talk about that because the next question I have for everybody is, who owns Jimmy Kimmel? Who owns The View? Who owns Beats One? And who owns Big Boy's Neighborhood, which is the uh, the last two Beats One and Big Boy's Neighborhood are the two uh, the names of the two people who did those long interviews that you guys should be familiar with by now if you if you watch that. Uh, so, um, actually, if you want, um, you can go ahead and pull up the next the next link there. All right. So the world the world's acceptance of Kanye's new conversion and interest and his ability to actually conduct these interviews and get aired across all these platforms is something that should cause us to immediately stop and ask ourselves. What's the catch? Why are they doing this? Why are they allowing it? What's the agenda? And why are they doing it? Why are they airing this? Um, so this is interesting here because uh, we find out when we look into this, this is the, the interview uh, that Adam was talking about earlier. I think it's out in Wyoming at one of his, uh, his properties. Um, this fellow, uh, Zane Lowe, who actually works for Beat One, Beats One, went out to uh, do this long, really well-produced interview with Kanye at his ranch. Um, so I just wanted to point out that I, I think it's interesting that instead of bringing Kanye on, on uh, Dateline, you know, or whatever, Fox or whatever, which I'm sure they will, we're probably going to get there. It's just not, it hasn't happened yet. I think it's interesting that they use uh, people like Zane Lowe, who on, on a world stage is not very well known. And I think e there's even sort of a, a reason for that as well, because it, it gives us the impression that Kanye's rise to fame is organic, that it's, it was, uh, it's something of a grassroots campaign, that, yeah, Kanye is not going to get to just go straight out to BET and talk about this. He's going to have to start with YouTubers and, and smaller folks first and see if they accept him. And it's kind of going to kind of grow organically that way from small to big. But the reality is Zane Lowe is owned by Apple Music. Uh, this entire interview was produced and put together by Apple Music. Apple Music did this, right? They just didn't tell you that. They just don't put it in your face. Um, this is something that, again, should cause us concern. So you're telling me that out of the blue, Kanye starts doing Sunday services and talking about Jesus, and Apple Music wants to pick him up and promote it? Right. <laughs> is that normal? Is that something that the world would do for our benefit, for the benefit of the gospel? Uh, that doesn't seem like it's part of what we, we, we understand to be truth. We know that when they put something out, when Apple puts something out, they have a really good reason for it, right? And we know that they are, uh, they're not giving people over there at Apple. Am I right? I mean, everyone that has an Apple product or has had to get one fixed or has had to deal with Apple customer service or has seen the way Apple operates, they're about profit. They're not about gospel. Right. Uh, so next, let me take you to Big Boy's Neighborhood. It's the other interview you guys probably saw. Uh, I think that one's over an hour as well. Um, just to get you a, a picture so you can see that guy. There he is right there. And that's it, right there on their, their homepage of their uh, YouTube channel, Kanye West, West Big Boy TV. Again, uh, you kind of see the use of, yes, this, this DJ and his team are, are like nationally syndicated. They, they have, they're picked up all over the place. But I, don't, I wouldn't say that Big Boy TV is like a, a 
a home, like a home, uh, a home name, right? Everybody doesn't know who Big Boy TV right. is. Am I right? right? Is that yeah? So again, I think it it, lo- it tries to give the appearance that something organic is happening here. Something small is happening that just blew up, and so it's like, oh, he's not showing up on, um, you know, um, the biggest shows yet. He's just showing up on these smaller YouTube channels. No, think again. Big Boy, Big Boy's neighborhood is owned by iHeartMedia, one of the largest nationally uh, national broadcasting syndicates in the world. All right, a multi-billion-dollar company. That's who owns Big Boy Media. That's who pays him. That's who promotes his channel and does his stuff. So iHeartMedia is actually the ones who promoted Big Boy's neighborhood interview with Kanye. So now you got what looks like it's something small and organic that's just beginning to grow out of nowhere, when in reality we're finding out that Apple and iHeartMedia are working together, or at least at the same time, to both push this, this Kanye stuff. So again, you have to ask yourself, why in the world would they do that, right? Um, you got iHeartMedia up already. Mm-hmm. Next, let's talk about Jimmy Kimmel real quick. Okay, this one, this one is what's what's really interesting to me. Uh, so Jimmy Kimmel, he went on Jimmy Kimmel Live just the other day. And let's back up again, okay? So who, who controls the world? Who controls the music industry? Who controls the, the different, uh, even the different influencers out there who are now talking about Kanye? Who controls those people? We can see these things really easy to look up. Really surface level research tells you who owns who and who's really put, promoting what, right? But then... We kind of break out of the mold and he shows up on Jimmy Kimmel Live, right? And Jimmy Kimmel literally stands there and lets Kanye speak for, you know, quite a few minutes about Jesus Christ, Jesus is King, the, the album, um, which is, I, I, I believe that may be a first in entertainment history. If you guys can correct me and send me a link to uh, another uh, time in the last 50 years where a celebrity who converted to, to the gospel of Jesus Christ was invited on to... Uh, a, a late night show, a live show like this, and gave him free floor to just preach for 10 minutes. If you could send me a link to that, I would like to see because I think this is a first for, for that. Quite the opposite. Uh, last thing I remember, uh, a lot of people have seen this, is the football player Ben Watson when he was on, uh, I think it was, was on Fox or MSNBC. Either way, he started talking about uh, Messiah and they they cut him off, you know, so... Uh, I'm like Justin, you know, it's like, hey, we want to, we want to be like, hey, this is, this is a move from the most high, uh, bringing people to Messiah. But is it, is it bringing people to uh, the true Messiah or is it bringing people to, uh, well, this is what oh, I'll be talking about a little bit later is the anti, anti-Messiah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, just right there on the, on this, this page, we see right there, Jimmy Kimmel Live, uh, second sentence, the nightly hour long show made its debut. January 26, 2003 at Hollywood Masonic Temple. Go ahead and click on that real quick. This is where Jimmy Kimmel Live is hosted every uh, every night, every week, or whatever, whenever they, they do it. I don't even know when they air. Um, it's it's in Masonic Temple. No no hiding it. It's not a it's not a secret. It's a giant Masonic temple. And actually, if you dig into that that temple and the architect of that temple, the guy who built that temple also built a bunch of other uh, um, projects for other secret societies around the same, the same area, uh, as well as uh, the uh, the Chinese theater that they use all the time for these huge award shows and stuff. All that stuff was many many of those things were designed and built by the same guy. It's interesting when you like read about the the Masonic Temple here. They say that they stopped using it as a temple uh, in, in 1982 because the uh, membership was declining. I find it hard to believe that membership <laughs> in Hollywood <laughs> was declining. Uh, forgive me for my skepticism, but again, uh, if we've done our research and we really know how things work, uh, that that should be the most popular bi- building in Hollywood. And in fact, it is. It is one of the most popular buildings in Hollywood. They continue to use it. The reality of the the situation is they just changed their their uh, their approach. The the people that own that building have just changed their approach and how they're going to use it and how they're going to did, influence people. Did you see who, uh, right here who bought it? It says until it was bought by the Walt Disney Company's Buena Vista Pictures distribution wow. in 1998. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of Disney, that's a, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up, bro. 
um, check out. So Jimmy Kimmel's on ABC, right? American Broadcasting Company. So again, uh, it wasn't just Jimmy Kimmel as a host was like, hey, you know what? I'm Catholic. I really like this Kanye thing that's going on. I'm going to just sporadically bring him on the show and let him talk about Jesus is King for a few minutes because I have the power to do that. If you think that's the way it works, then you completely uh, misunderstood and underestimated the way uh, this actually works. Broadcasting and, and uh, production of these shows actually works. They're highly organized, scripted, and planned out uh, long in advance. It wasn't just Jimmy Kimmel that needed to want to have Kanye on. It was the show's producers and directors mm -hmm. would need to want to have Kanye on. It would also be ABC would want to have Kanye on. And even farther than that, we see right there, it would actually have to be Disney. Walt Disney actually owns ABC. So now we have Walt Disney, Apple, iHeartMedia, and all the subsidiaries of those companies working together to promote Jesus is King. I'm sorry, but it looks like acceptance uh, of the world in a way that literally should just cause all of us to go, wait a second, wait a pump, second. Pump, the, pump those brakes. <laughs> wait a second. Why are they doing this? This doesn't make any sense. These are the same companies, the same people. Come on, guys. You guys have seen the research about Disney, right? You've watched the videos. You've done the reading. You've seen the evidence. Disney just constantly... Uh, Without, without fail, continues to push all kinds of strange, sick, twisted sexual agendas on our children and on the adults in every kind of way. We've seen how Disney has used their stars to become music stars later, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, uh, Christina Aguilera, and many, many other who Disney, who Disney raised up and, and turned them into these people, Miley Cyrus, who then end up completely switching over. They, we know how the, the agenda is to, to let kids be raised with kid celebrities, to be led by those kid celebrities, and then they, then they flip, and all of a sudden they're Satanists, and all, the, all of a sudden, you know, they're all dressing up like, uh, you know, Jezebel in, in every sense of the word, not just in the sexual way, but also, like, in a spiritual way, looking like uh, just doing straight Satanic videos and terribly, terribly promiscuous and, and dark lyrics. They do this to get kids attached to these child stars, and then they flip the kids over, and they, mm -hmm. they throw their whole worldview for a loop. We know this stuff. This is the way it works. So ask, we have to ask ourselves, why is Walt Disney doing this? <laughs> right? Right. It, it doesn't make any sense. Speaking of um, Masonic Temple, since we're on the topic, I wanted to just show real quick the MTV uh, headquarters building uh, and that that – you guys should surely already know this. Again, this should all be warm up and reminders for those of you who have been around for a while and have done your own research. The MTV headquarters building is in fact a Masonic temple. It says so right on the building. There's a placard there, you can walk up and read it. That's the building that we were talking about earlier. There's uh, industry insiders coming out saying that they were performing rituals up on the top floor over the master of the records. So um, the music industry is wholly, completely, totally owned. It is owned, and if you're not start if you if you can't see that yet, then I ask you to 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 look into it more because there's so much more. There's 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 an unlimited amount of information. Although to be honest with you, I mean, for example, we're, we're going to talk about this book, uh, the book of Jesus, in a few minutes. But last week, I was looking up the book, looking for specific pictures on the book of Jesus, pictures taken of the inside of the book that popped right up on Bing, and now I can't find those pictures on Bing anymore or Google. So the point I'm making is a lot of this information is going to be, it, we are starting to lose the, the flexibility and freedom to do our own research. So time, the time is running out. It really is in terms of the door closing, in terms of our ability to see and hear and know and, and feed on truth before it is completely hidden and taken away and the doors close and the flood comes. All right, so the last thing I want to hit for this question the question of who owns Jimmy Kimmel, who owns the music industry, is I wanted to show you the six companies that own almost all media in the entire world. So if you guys haven't seen this, this infographic before, uh, it just demonstrates the six companies that own almost all music, all, I'm sorry, all media, books, movies, television, radio, uh, everything. 
uh, are listed right here. So we can see that literally just six men or six corporations. And when you dig into these guys, I mean, it's just a ton of interesting stuff there as well. These people own every media outlet that we uh, watch. Look, this guy, look, the same guy, Disney owns ABC, Marvel, Lucasfilm, who made Star Wars, ESPN, mm -hmm. 123, uh, ESPN News, Disney Junior, ABC Family, um, Vice. Pixar. There's a whole, what's that? Pixar. Yeah, yeah Pixar, yeah, yeah. Uh, just the History, the history Channel, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, the Disney. So Disney owns the History Channel. It's interesting how Disney's involved in um, in uh, science and space often as well. Very interesting. Uh, so yeah, those are different publishing companies. Really well known book publishing companies, owned by Disney. Uh, Time Warner, another huge one. Yeah, they own CNN, HBO, um, CNN US, Cartoon Network, uh, Hulu. I mean, just goes on and on and on. The amount of power and influence and control right there is just insane, insane. So these are just, this is just my way of trying to remind you, brothers and sisters, to not forget from whence we came, right? Exactly, exactly. We, told, we were told to come out of her, right? To come out of her, my people. We're going to read that verse later. And we did. We were at least we. I hope. I hope you guys have. If you're listening to this, I hope you have done that already. I hope you've unplugged from the influence of these people, of these men, of these conglomerates, these organizations. I hope you've unplugged from them. I hope you've realized that they are just breeding you, programming you, feeding you what they want you to to believe, to know. How they're telling you how to act, what's important, what's cool, what's valuable. This is all being controlled and manipulated on a, on a global, not global, worldwide scale. Um, and, and guys, until you know that, until you see that, you can't really understand what it means when it says that the whole earth is under the deception of the prince of this world. Once you realize that, you can realize that we truly are a peculiar people who are called out of that to walk in holiness and we cannot win out there. We can't win with their media, with their movies, with their channels. I'm not saying we shouldn't try. I support what Rob Skeeb is doing. He's going to try and, and make his own version of, of publications that, that will wake up more people. And I'm mm -hmm. all about that. I support Same that. Here. But we cannot, we, Kanye West can't just go from pure Satanism, which we're going to show you <laughs> is what was going down. Um, to Jesus is king and to have Apple and Disney and all these folks just 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 get on board with that and help him out. You know, it just doesn't make any sense at all. I agree. And, you know, one thing, um, uh, you know, as far as another show, keep in mind also Kim Kardashian was on The View uh, not too long ago talking about right. his conversion right. and all that kind of stuff. So we're seeing, we're really, really seeing this um, being pushed by the mainstream media, as uh, as you've shown very, very well. Amen, amen, big time. So uh, there's a connection there. So now, now again, we talked about we only want to talk about what's relevant with Kanye, right? We don't really need to worry about his past relationships and stuff like that. We don't want to dig up Kurt. We don't. We're not trying to dig up dirt on Kanye just for the sake of of hurting his character just to try and that's, that's what's called a straw man argument. It would be uh, dishonest of me to just be like, oh, well, he's got all these parking tickets and oh, he slept with all these people. And right. all, not, that, that's not what we're doing here. We're not slinging mud here on, on uh, past life stuff, right? But when it is relevant, right, then it becomes important. So I wanna give you a, a quick example. I was talking to my wife about this the other night. Um, I, when I was in high school, I used to, um, I used to actually be in drama, like the drama team, and I, I liked doing skits and stuff. And my uh, my drama teacher at my high school just was like sure that I, I should be an actor. He wanted me to be an actor. He wanted me to act. And I used to do these, um, I used to do these uh, these tests on people to see how gullible people would be. And it it was really simple, honestly. I would I would tell them, I would say, look, I'm gonna perform a test on you, okay? I'm going to see if I can convince you of a lie 
right in front of your face, even though I just told you that I'm going to do it. Are you ready? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trick you into thinking that something is true that is completely false, completely false. I'm going to do it in just a second here, right? Are you with me? Are you following me? And he's like, yeah, okay, okay, all right, all right, shoot, shoot. And I'd be like, no, 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 I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. That's, I kind of felt weird saying that, you know? I kind of felt like, ugh. I felt like I was like Satan himself or something. Like, I, I don't know. I, that's an exercise I was told to do, and I'm, I'm really not comfortable doing it. Never mind. I, uh, I, oh, I kind of just feel sick lying like that, actually. Um, forgive me. Um, I've actually... I've actually been struggling with with being a um, you know a compulsive liar like my whole life. So just just forgive me for that. And they'd be like, "Oh yeah, no problem, man, no problem." And I'd be like, "I just lied about all that. I just <laughs> I know that's true. I, that whole thing was a, I wasn't I wasn't repent. I wasn't feeling bad. I, I, I'm not a compulsive liar. You know, you can tell them to their face you're going to do this, and then do it right in their mm -hmm. right in their face, and they just think it's a joke. It's crazy." Right. Uh, when you look at like KJ, right? Scariest movie ever channel. He's always talking about lesser magic. And that's, that's the way in which the industry uses media and music and imagery to tell you what's going to happen. We see this with the Simpsons and stuff like that, right? Tons of mu uh, movies pointing to references of 9-11 uh, and stuff like that. We see this lesser magic. And it's basically where the enemy is telling you what he's going to do before he does it. And, you know, some people have theories that, like, he has to do that, maybe. Like, maybe that's part of the enemy's um, limitations, that he has to do it. I think he does it out of, out of sheer pride. I think, he, I think he gets a kick out of it. I agree. I, I think it's uh, the enemy's way of, he, you know, so we know Satan wants to be like the Most High. That's, he said it himself. And we know that what is the Most High famous for is he's, you know, he tells things, you know, what they happen before they happen. So this is his way of prophesying in his little world. Uh, mm -hmm. by, by predictive programming. Right, right. Amen. So let's look at some of this stuff. Let's look at some of the evidences that pertain to antichrist-type behaviors. And, and yes, we, we went there. We're saying antichrist. And I'm not saying he is the antichrist. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. I'm saying these are antichrist behaviors. So here we have the book of Jesus. It was released in March of 2015. Adam's got the uh, the website up on the board right there. You can literally go and buy a copy of the Book of Jesus. It has the the uh, picture of Kanye West on the front there, and what they've gone and done. This is Kanye's book. What they've actually gone and done is they've made revisions through the Book of Genesis, and every time the Genesis says the words God or Yeshua, and that's funny they use the word Yeshua mm -hmm. there on the website, they replaced it with the word Kanye. Um, and there's actually another picture. There's another link right under that one, Adam, uh, where you can see inside the book. Actually, go ahead and scroll down for the bottom first, and let's take a look at that. Uh, all the places it was aired. There it is. Oh, yeah. I the can book see it right of there. Jesus. So I have a better picture and another link there of that page. We want to look at that real quick. Let's see. I mean, this guy wasn't just being a little rebellious, brothers and sisters. He was practically telling us that he is working for the Antichrist. And we're going to show that. All right. Yeah, there you go. The book of Jesus. What does it say there? It says, first it starts off with a quote from Kanye. He says, Kanye says, I am a God. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a God. I just told you that's who I think I am. Chapter one. In the beginning, Kanye created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of Kanye hovered above the face of the water. You see what's going on here? Literally. And, and this is where I, I, I don't want to say I get frustrated, but I'm, I'm really concerned for brothers and sisters that are like, Oh, you know, Kanye said, you know, he believes in Jesus. He even said the word Yeshua on one of his albums, throw all this out, you know, don't even look at it. It's no big deal. Like, Again, if me, if you or I, Justin, rewrote the Bible and put our names in it, you don't think that everybody would would look at us with a with a fine tooth comb to make, sure, to make sure to make sure, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if we could come back from that, bro. No, I mean, seriously, I don't, so. I don't think so. I mean, all right. So, what kind of a person does this? What kind of a person does it? This? this is just 2015 March, so just 
just a little over four and a half years ago, right? Um, so you could say, oh, well, he might have changed a lot in the last four years. Well, maybe. Let's go look at the next evidence here. There's an idol of Kanye West as Jesus on Hollywood Boulevard. Now, something that we have to remember and, and, and uh, be, cognizant, be cognizant of is that they're always going to give us a, a reason why it's there, right? They're not just going to... They're not going to be like, oh, we put an idol of Kanye here because we want to promote this antichrist deception that's coming. They're not going to do that. <laughs> they're going to say they have some really interesting, cool reason for doing that. And they're saying the idol represents Kanye because uh, they're, they're saying Kanye was singing all this Jesus walks with me stuff. And, um, and then he had a huge fall from, from grace and became, you know, uh, didn't, didn't upkeep his Christian values. And they're just making fun of Kanye's West's fall from grace is what they're saying. But you, so you mean to tell me that Kanye West and everybody in Hollywood's okay with a statue depicting Kanye as Jesus Christ? They're all cool with that just because they want to poke fun at Kanye? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so, bro. I mean, let's just look at it for what it is. It's a giant golden statue of Kanye. It's an idol. It's a false idol of Kanye. He wrote his own Bible, at least Genesis, and now we have a golden idol of Kanye on Hollywood Boulevard probably not too far from the Masonic building where Jimmy Kimmel is filmed. All right. Next, take a look at the Rolling Stone cover. Again, this is relevant. This is relevant, brothers and sisters. I don't care if it happened two or three years ago. This is relevant because it's Kanye telling us that he thinks he is Jesus, that he is a God. He is telling us that he is, is, is intentionally willing to lead us away from the true Messiah and to himself instead, okay? So he's always, he's always had an interest in the things of Jesus, at least in the way he talks. Like, when, when did Jesus walks come out? Like 2004, 2004, 2004, I think? Yeah. 10 years ago, when he was on the interview with, um, with uh, who was it, Big Boy's Neighborhood, the second one we showed earlier, they played a, they played a recording of Kanye talking um, 10 years ago where Kanye said that one day he was going to start a church 10 years ago. And he's done all this antichrist stuff since then. And then here he comes starting the church. Remember my example of the, of the big lie, right? I'm going to tell you that I'm lying to you mm -hmm. and then I'm going to lie to you. And you're just going to think I'm, I'm not lying. It's just crazy. It's just crazy. All right. Uh, so yeah, Kanye depicted as Messiah on the cover of Rolling Stone. Again, it's relevant. I'm sorry if you don't think it is, it is. Um, Next, we have a, a picture of Kanye's album cover, Jesus. Do I need to say anything? I mean, look at that. I mean, this is why we have to have discernment, brothers and sisters. We can't just say, ah, you know, uh, which I have, you know, he said that he's repented, but I, ha I haven't heard him say, you know, I've repented for all this satanic stuff I've done and, you know, for, for making a blasphemous Bible. And, I mean, all this kind of stuff. We, we haven't heard that, you know? Mm-hmm. Haven't mm -hmm. seen it. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, this this is not, you know, this I, I, I can hear the voices of people who are in just the biggest denial, just in the biggest denial ever, that they want to defend Kanye. Oh, well, let's go look at all your sins. I've mm -hmm. already put mine out there. Same I already here. apologize. Same I've, here. My testimony is on my channel. You can go take a look at it. I told you what I've done. And I, I'll be honest with what I've done and struggled with. But I never claim to be God. I never claimed to be the Messiah. I never rewrote the Bible. And if I had, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't come out and start a ministry right afterwards and, and expect everyone to accept me. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's the craziest thing in the world that we should even consider that what this man has to say is valuable to us as a people uh, until he makes a, a world of changes. A lot of time has passed and he's done a lot of proving until then, it looks like what it is, the Antichrist. Look at the upside down cross right there. Right. The Antichrist. He's combined, he combined Kanye, which is yay, and Jesus to make Jesus. That's what that is. Let's take a look and see what the Church of Satan thinks about all this. Go to the next link there. The newest album uh, that Kanye released, Jesus is King. Uh, we're finding out that the Church of Satan is pleased that Kanye West has released Jesus is King pleased. And if you read this to try and make a sense of why they're pleased with it, it, 
you'll see that all they're doing is mocking you to your face. Satan is the best friend Kanye has ever had, says the Church of Satan. Now, you can read through and look at the article if you want to scroll down a little bit. There's some details there. But he doesn't really say or tell you and explain truly why they're saying they're pleased. They make a couple of little jokes, and they send out a couple of tweets. Uh, they said, we're more pleased than anything. Only those who read our literature will get it. It's right in our but face. Right in our faces. Right in your face. They're just telling you. They, they are pleased. Of course they're pleased. Look at what's going on, brothers and sisters. Right in your face. Right in your face. Oh, man. All right. Last, last thing. And yes, this, I'm telling you, I, I, if you say this isn't relevant because he did it last year, I don't care. You're wrong. It's, it's, it is relevant. Mm -hmm. This is relevant because he said he was going to do this 10 years ago. Actually, there's a link right there. Uh, his decade-old statement that he would one day start a church. He said this 10 years ago, and that, that idea and that talk has eventually led to him uh, doing Sunday service, okay? So he's been planning this for a long time, brothers and sisters, a long time. So don't be, don't be surprised. And isn't it interesting that he would use a musician? Right. Yep. Which that's actually one of the main points I want to talk about uh, a little bit later is uh, even, even back in the book of Daniel, um, it was the musicians, which we'll talk, I don't want to give it all away, yeah. but if you remember Nebuchadnezzar and the statue, uh, when were they supposed to bow down to the statue? It was when they heard uh, the musicians starting to play their instruments is when they had to do it. So isn't it interesting that here we are, that we've got musicians uh, kind of pushing this uh, this agenda, which we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Yeah, right? interesting Amen. stuff. Amen. Someone brought up a good point too in the chats. They said Beyonce also bought a church. Remember mm -hmm. she bought a church recently? Justin Bieber has been recently talking about uh, starting a church with uh, the Hillsong, uh, Carl Lentz, right? Well, Justin Bieber is also on Def Jam Records. Isn't that interesting? All right, so the last last little couple of things I want to show you is some quotes and some things from a couple more pieces of evidences that are relevant to this conversation uh, from Kanye. Kanye has expressed clearly to us that he believes that he is a god, okay? Here's the I Am A God uh, Kanye West exhibition that happened in 2015. Uh, if you go to the next link, there's uh, the famous quote from Kanye, I believe, is this one. He says, everybody says, who do you think you are? And I just told you who I thought that I was, a God. That's who I am. That's a clip from the actual interview right there. All right, next. There's actually a website dedicated to the quotes of Kanye um, and we'll pull the link. The next, I think the next one is, uh, the, the last link there is a, is a link to that website where you can actually go and look at all these motivational quotes. They're, they're, believe it or not, there already is a religion being built around Kanye, whether you realize it or not. You can go and, and find it. These people say, uh, they say that Kanye's quotes where, if you have discernment, if you, if you are in the word and, and you, know, uh, you know the word and you apply it to your life, you're going to know that all these things that Kanye are saying are just uh, blatantly prideful and arrogant and cocky and just terrible advice. But people are taking his pride and they're calling it confidence and they're saying that it's a good thing and that Kanye's confidence is something we should all uh, appreciate about him and, and follow suit with. I mean, it's just insane. There's like I think there's like a hundred quotes here from him. But if you just scroll down, you can look through um, – some just, of just real quick, you know, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit because, again, I'm going to what I'm going to be doing here in a little bit is focusing in on his recent words uh, a week ago that uh, Apple Music interview, and in that interview, he actually says the same thing. Like even he goes even further than this. He's like, "I'm the greatest uh, artist you know that's ever lived," that everybody knows that you know it's it's not even a right. question. Like, and that was a week yeah. ago, and, and this is not the kind of stuff that comes out of uh, you know a true convert. Um, that's not hum that's not humility. That's not being humble. That's not being meek. Uh, all these things mm -hmm. that uh, what Yeshua actually told us how to act. So, right, right. Yeah, look at that. I'm too busy writing history to read it. He says, um, "We are all self-conscious." I'm just the first to admit it. That's not even true. Uh, one of the things says one of his biggest regrets in life is that he'll never get to see himself perform live. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, it's pretty crazy. A lot of interesting quotes. Right, right near the bottom, there's a, there's an interesting one. Oh, that one. Go up one more. That that was a good one. Did you already see that one before? One more. Oh. One more. This one up right here. here. Yeah, people never change. They just become better at hiding who they really are. Interesting. Kanye West. In your face. Right in your face. Right in your face. And then uh, down at the bottom, there's one more I wanted to point out. Uh, where? Uh, yeah, right there. Where at? Up here? Yeah, you go a little bit at the bottom there. Yeah. Where is it? There he is. First, number 38. Sorry. Nothing in life is promised except death. Kanye West. <sighs> Amen. There's the gospel of Kanye right there. All right. So I'm just going to close my part of this and we can jump into to Adam's part, which is which is to me even more fascinating than this. Stuff. This is stuff that you guys should already know. This should have served as just a reminder for stuff that we've already been through. Um, and for those who may have never heard this stuff before, you probably think that we're whack jobs, but... <laughs> If you want truth, you'll find it, and it's out there, and it's right. it's freely available. Um, but what I believe is that Kanye's rise is symptomatic of a much bigger underlying issue. Christians don't know the entire gospel, right? Right, and they don't know Messiah. They don't know his teachings, uh, his parables, and his his full purpose. His full purpose, right? Because they don't know they don't know the word. Why did he really even come? It doesn't. There's no context to the belief. Subsequently, they don't know what their own purpose is either, right? They only know, quote unquote, know that he died for their sins. What sins? What is sin? Why death? Why blood? Why resurrection? What is he doing now? What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to respond? These are all questions that most Christians don't even know the answer what to. Is, what does it mean to follow him? You know, to, to pick up your exactly. cross daily and to deny your flesh and to follow him daily. We don't get any of that kind of stuff. And you're, and you're absolutely right. And, and uh, you know, I, Kanye isn't the problem. The, like you said, the much bigger mm -hmm. problem is the lukewarm doctrines that have uh, continued to get colder and colder uh, over the last you know, last century and a half or so, uh, you did a really good video, um, uh, The Great Bible Heist, uh, how pretty much just doctrines just wildly changed in the mid-1800s with the dispensational movement. And it's just gotten worse and worse to a point today where it's like, you're right, what do people think the gospel is? Is You believe mm -hmm. in this historical figure that's named Jesus Christ, uh, that he died for your sins, and that's it. You just believe that that happened, and that's it. There's no, there's yeah. no walk. There's no responsibility. There's no refinement. There's no, um, there's nothing. You know, it's just that's it. And 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 if if you if you want to point out my, you know, if you want to point out you know sin, then you're judging me, and you know that's not the gospel. And you're adding right. works, and uh, I don't want to have anything to do with that. It's so right. watered down. It's su it's at such a point where it's so watered down that people are accepting his doctrine because that's where we're at. And he's mm -hmm. just a spokesperson for this lukewarm gospel that's been preached over the last however many centuries. Exactly. Exactly, man. It, what it really boils down to is that Christianity itself has become nothing more than a consumer demographic. It's just a group of people mm -hmm. identified by a very loose term who are used to, to sell products to, you know. Um, and most Christians are too busy living out their worldly lives to even notice that the doctrines that they're hearing in the music, the, even the Christian music they've been listening to for the last couple decades, isn't even in the Bible. Half of the stuff that when, when I get into a conversation with some Christians, sometimes they start quoting things to me that they think is gonna gonna you know uh, prove the point they're trying to make to me, and they they end up quoting a scripture from I mean, they end up quoting a, a lyric from a song that's not even in the Word. I, I think half of them don't even really know what's in the Word. Um, is it, it's it's driven by just memes of false wisdom generated by people who are just trying to sell you stuff essentially it's become a prosperity doctrine mm -hmm. is what it is and interestingly yeah. kanye was recently invited to joel osteen's congregation we'll see if he actually accepts that that'll tell you a lot right mm -hmm. i'll be surprised if he doesn't actually um the christianity as a movement christianity as a demographic as an industry is more concerned with what you will buy than who you are and how you live Kanye is only a byproduct of a Christian consumer obsession, and ultimately, you are the one being purchased, not his album. Something, uh, something you didn't bring up, but that 
you and in our private discussions that I thought was fascinating is the possibility of Kanye actually maybe even believing that he's converted, um, maybe through like MK Ultra programming, because like like kind of like how we started off when you when you look at some of his words from a surface value uh, from you know from a surface perspective they seem pretty convincing do you think that he's a really good liar or do you think that possibly maybe there was some mk ultra programming and he's doing exactly what his handlers uh, have taught him to do just before i go and segue into my uh, my part i'm just curious if you can expound on that a little bit before we move on yeah man that's i mean i'm with you bro i really am you know when I don't know how many of you guys have looked into, um, you know, it goes back actually to the Disney, the Disney methodology of raising children up and, and kind of programming children through, through what they're doing. If you, if you looked into that, you've probably also looked into the MK ultra, uh, experimentation that again, publicly available, um, information about a government program that is not a conspiracy. It actually has happened and uh in my opinion continues to happen although they they act like it hasn't um and one of the common denominators we see with some people who uh, deal with sort of mind control programming from a young age um is that they they always tend to have breakdowns and that's why i have so many of these uh celebrities that have these strange breakdowns they they uh start acting strange in interviews and on stage and just weird things happen well, Kanye had one of these breakdowns just, I think it was just last year. And actually, after he came out of uh, rehab or whatever kind of uh, center he was in, we saw that he had dyed his hair blonde. Right, which is a, yeah. huge, yep. That's a exactly. huge marker. It's a huge indicator of MKUltra uh, mind control programming. We see a lot of different celebrities who have done the same thing. They go away for a little while, they come back and they're blonde now, and now they're doing what they're supposed to be doing again, mm -hmm. and they're back on track. Kanye comes out of, out of his rehabilitation of whatever kind he was in, his hair is blonde, he's being really quiet, he's not really saying much, he's hanging out with Donald Trump all of a sudden, you know, and then uh, here we are less than a year later, and uh, actually it was early this year, 2019, he started his Sunday services. Right. So it didn't take long for him to go from complete overhaul of his life and just complete mental breakdown to starting Sunday services. And actually one of the first interviews he did when he got out of his, uh, his, his um, rehab, you can see that in his interview, he actually has the blonde hair is with a, uh, a radio uh, personality named Charlemagne the God. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's one of the people that Kanye chose to first go and sit with and talk about his rehab. So yeah, man, I, I, don't, I don't know if, if he, knows better honestly i don't i don't i honestly don't know um you're right because some of the things he says is pretty convincing and you and i both agreed we get it why people would be like oh you know he's, he's got an album about jesus and you know he mm -hmm. even says yeshua in the album like what else do i need to hear that's it i'm good you know and then they start to hear some you know some of the uh, some of the things he says but again when when those little blinders go up it goes right over people's heads which i know a lot of people watched this apple music interview uh, mm -hmm. but i think a lot of things went over people's head because if they didn't see some of these things then i think that they were blinded to it which you know i'm gonna, start, I'm gonna show you in just a second right but yep yeah one thing i can't agree with everybody else on is that we do need to pray for him mm -hmm. um and just, but we also we also need to be less focused on on Kanye, you know. And believe it or not, we're not doing all this because we want to focus on Kanye. We're doing all this so we so that you guys will stop focusing on Kanye. Right. I listened to his entire album. I watched all his interviews, and there's no reason why anybody should be listening to Kanye right now. Uh, if he is even if, if he is genuine, uh, which I I, uh, I have a really hard time believing based on everything we've just discussed. Um, if he is genuine then uh, he's definitely fallen into the wrong hands. I know he's already said he hired a, a uh, Bible teacher to follow him around for a little while. Um, you know, he's already kind of uh, palling around with some celebrities and stuff. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I, this goes back right, this goes right back into the, the prosperity doctrine. There's, I think he's going to fall. Honestly, I think he's going to fall in with, the uh, the uh, Benny Hens and Joel Osteens and even like Oprah Winfrey's of the world. Mm -hmm. So I agree. 
All right. We ready? Yeah, man. All right. So uh, we're going to take a look at this uh, Apple Music interview um, that Justin was talking about a little bit earlier. And there's a few things. You know what? I don't know if actually it was done by Apple Music. And you can see here, this is really recent. So what part one all it was all about was kind of setting the stage as far as why we should be aware, why we should have some discernment, uh, why we should even question this uh, instead of just saying, hey, you know, this guy is saying the name Jesus. Um, he's singing about him. Uh, leave him alone. Don't judge him. Um, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> like some people were saying in the chat earlier, let's put all your sins out there, which we actually have. Justin and I both have actually uh, given our testimonies and put all of our sins out there. Um, and some pretty embarrassing stuff. So um, we've done that. And what we did in part one is kind of show you why we need to question this man instead of just blindly following him saying, hey, you know, he said the word Jesus, that's all, that's that's good enough for me. He said the word Jesus and gospel, that's all I need to hear, uh, I'm good to go. Um, so anyways, now with part two, what I want to talk about is going through, um, going through this interview that was done just on October 24th. So this is very recent. So we, we said earlier that we need to judge each other by our fruits and literally what comes out of our mouth. So I want you to hear what comes out of uh, his mouth and let's be the judges and see what, what this man is up to. So let's, let's, uh, let's listen in. Actually, let me put this in theater mode. Yeah, that'd be better. Let's listen. To me, like you want to go back to go forward. Like you want to go back and use some of these te techniques and these ideas oh. in order to Rome is dismantle the, it ultimately. Yeah, like Rome is the is the true Silicon Valley of humanity. I'll did you did you guys catch that? He said that Rome is the true Silicon Valley of humanity. I want to play that again for you because this is really important. This is coming out of his own mouth just a week and a half ago. These te techniques and these ideas oh. in order to Rome is dismantle the, it ultimately. Yeah, like Rome is the is the true Silicon Valley of humanity. A lot of the ideas and things that we need yeah. have been are from thousands and thousands. So he he's saying that our needs and what we need to understand and know is from Rome and their principles and doctrines over the last thousands, couple thousands of years. And as we, a lot of us know that, uh, Justin, what was it, uh, second century, third, was, was it second century, third century, when the Roman Catholic Church took over and started changing doctrines? And I mean, your, your documentary, the, the Not Serene documentary, I think uh, really busts that wide open. So, but, uh, not to be repetitive, but I just want you guys to hear this one more time, just because it's so important. This is what is coming out of his mouth. This, these are his fruits, and this is where he's going to be leading people. If if he believes that these te techniques and these ideas oh. in order to Rome is dismantle it ultimately. Yeah, like Rome is the a lot of the ideas and things that we need yeah. have been are from thousands and thousands of years ago. It's just like, what do we need for our yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of need chart? Maslow's hierarchy of needs chart. This is really interesting. This is totally a secular idea uh, with some really, really bad roots here. But uh, this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which he just quoted here. Uh, and this is what it says, self-actualization, esteem, love, belonging, safety, physiological. It sounds great on the, on the surface, but this is not biblical teaching here. Uh, we know that our needs are met by the Most High, that we're, that we're to seek his kingdom and his righteousness first, and then all these other things would be added unto us. Uh, this, this man is just preaching stuff of the world. This is worldly stuff right here. And so just to back up again, what he said, just to be very clear, is he said that Rome is the uh, Silicon Valley of humanity and that all the answers, everything that we need, comes from them and his doctrines thousands of years old, which is telling us that he believes in what the Pope talks about, the Vatican, the, the Roman Catholic Church, which, uh, you know, 
if you haven't seen the video that uh, that we, we put out um, a couple months ago about the beast of Revelation Unlocked, uh, I think we unequivocally have shown that the Vatican is the beast of Revelation. I know a lot of people mislabel them as the, the whore of Babylon, the whore church, whatnot, uh, but we have to realize that uh, we have to go by what Scripture says, but the, the Vatican is the beast of Revelation, and this man, I believe, is working for them. Uh, it wasn't too long ago that the Pope actually endorsed uh, Kanye, and uh, like Justin said in part one, when the world starts endorsing this man is the exact moment where we need to be like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Um, you know, uh, and then hold on, there's a couple other things he says here real quick. What is, mm. what are our personal needs as a human being? And what we need the most is each other. Mm. Is that true? Justin, is that our biggest need is each other, or mm -hmm. is our biggest need uh, the Most High, the Most High Yahuwah and His begotten Son, Yeshua HaMashiach? Is that our biggest need? Uh, again, uh, what's the scripture says? They speak of the world and the world hears them. Uh, and this is what's going on. He's speaking like the world, and the world is hearing him. And this is exactly why Justin and I are concerned for our brothers and sisters that are caught up in this, that are like, don't judge them, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, no, we need to judge him by what he says, and this is exactly what he's saying right here. Let me uh, let me play a little bit more, and let me fix the audio so you can hear it. Give me just a second. I don't know why I'm going to have to switch it back and forth each time. Mm. That's why we gather together, just like the antelopes that are running out there. Mm -hmm. We gather together. And what is the best form of each other? Family. To keep our families close. Mm -hmm. But cities have been designed to create more problems that can create more industries. So, uh, you know, a lot of this Hegelian dialect, you know, problem, reaction, solution, uh, and uh, that's what we're getting here. But let me, uh, let's move on to another section here. Uh, let's see, it's, uh, and you can see right here, he'll, he's talking about, he's promoting the one world agenda. It's very, very clear. It, you have to read between the lines. And again, if, if you, if you like the guy, if you love his music, you're going to be blinded to this and you're going to be, it's going to go right over your head. And you're not going to see it. L listen to this. It goes on. Sure. So regardless of what's happening at Wall Street and what's happening at the board, uh, at the, you mm -hmm. know, with, with trade and what's happening a Pangea type mentality. Mm -hmm. Whoa, Pangea type mentality. I mean, this is this is the Pangea. The Pangea is the this is the the thought that all the continents used to be together. But what he's actually saying is is all the world coming together. A Pangea type mentality. Let's hear him say it again, real quick, just so you don't think that I'm crazy. It goes on. Sure. So. Regardless of what's happening at Wall Street and what's happening at the board, uh, at the, you know, mm -hmm. with, with trade and what's happening. A Pangea type mentality, mm -hmm. a UN mm -hmm. coming together. A UN coming together. So now he's talking about the United Nations. This is all like one world government, one world religion stuff. This is what this man is promoting. This is what the hidden agenda is, and he's plainly saying it here, but again, if you're blinded by your love for him, or, or uh, you love his music, whatever, you're, you're not going to see this, and this is exactly why I wanted to show you these things. Uh, Justin, any, uh, anything you want to point on before I move on to the next section? So again, he's talking about a Pangea-type mentality. He's talking about the UN coming together. This is a, a one-world stuff, one-world stuff here. Um, let's see, at 3501, let's see here. There's a balance of when we have to be closed on yep. Sunday. You know, I know that's also one of his song names, but this is, this is what he's pushing. We saw uh, just a few minutes ago that he's a supporter of Rome, and he, in fact he says that all of our problems can be solved by the doctrines of Rome from, from thousands of years ago. Um, so I think actually this is a good opportunity to talk about what Rome actually says uh, and what their agenda is. I want to show you something. Um, some of you may know that... Um, in let's see may hang on one second may of uh 2020 the pope is going to have a united like a united type of meeting where the world leaders are supposed to be invited and um 
whatnot. And he said it's basically going to be centered around this encyclical letter, Laudato Si. Um, and so um, this is so long, um, but I just want to show you just one or two parts real quickly of what the Pope is pushing. This is part uh, section 237. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, we're going to be talking about the difference between Sunday and the actual Sabbath here in a little bit, and what that has to do with the mark of the beast versus the mark of the Most High, Yahuwah, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. Sunday is the day of the resurrection, the first day of the new creation, whose first fruits are the Lord's risen humanity, the pledge of the final transfiguration of all uh, created reality. It also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. So they're basically, with fancy, fancy words to sweep people off their feet, he's basically saying, you know, that Sunday has re is replaced, uh, replaced the Sabbath uh, and is the day of rest. So and then he goes on to talk, talk here, the law of the weekly rest forbade work on the seventh day so that your ox, your donkey may have rest and the son of your maidservant and the stranger may be refreshed. Rest opens our eyes to the larger picture and gives us renewed sensitivity to the rights of others. Again, he's always using these just so like, false humility, false humble words. And so the day of rest centered on the Eucharist. So the day of rest centered around Sunday sheds its light on the week and motivates us to a greater concern uh, for nature and the poor. So long story short, the, they've replaced, um, they've replaced, um, uh, the Sabbath with Sunday. And this is, you know, this is something they're very boastful about. These are quotes from the Catholic Church about the Sabbath. I'll just read a few of them for you. The Catholic Record, September 1st, 1923. Sunday is our mark of authority. That's an interesting uh, word that they use here, their mark of authority. The Catholic Church is above the Bible, and this transference of the Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. This is all, you can all look this up for yourself. This is just a summarized page here with, uh, with citations. Um, Chancellor Albert Smith for Cardinal of Baltimore, Archdiocese, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, letter dated February 10th, 1920. If Protestants would follow the Bible, they should worship God on the Sabbath day, which by God is Saturday. In keeping the, sun, in keeping the Sunday, they are following the law of the Catholic Church. They're very, very boastful about this. Uh, and you can look these all up for yourself. These, they are people, the people from the Catholic Church actually said this. Um... Yeah, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. And, you know, most modern-day Christians, lukewarm Christians, you know, don't have a problem with Sunday because that's what they believe. That's what they've been raised their entire life, that uh, this is just normal. It's what you do. It's, it's, but what we have to realize, this is man-made traditions that make of no effect the commandments of Yah. It's the same thing that Messiah Yeshua rebuked the Pharisees for. Um, he didn't rebuke them for following Torah. He, he, you know, he said, uh, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? Um, the, what, actually, what did he say? I, I think this is uh, in Mark, uh, let's see, Mark 7, 6 maybe, I think. Yeah, well has Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and actually keeps on going. I think it's just till seven, but let me just make sure. How be it in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of Elohim, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups. Anyways, this is one of the traditions that they do. But in our modern day, one of the traditions is, is that we, even Protestants, are... Um, you know, daughters of the Catholic Church. They continued this Sunday worship thing. So I'm not going to keep going, but... Um, you know, this is this is this is what they say. The Catholic Church, for over one thousand years before the existence of a Protestant, by virtue of her divine mission, changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. Period. That's it. This is this is what they this is what they're they're doing. Um, you know, and in my opinion, this is what they're marching to is a Sunday law. The, the National Catholic Register uh, taking Sunday seriously. Poland leads the way. Poland. I'm not going to read the whole article, but Poland uh, now has a Sunday law. You can't buy or sell anything. 
uh, and it's a, it's their national day of worship. And if you don't think that's coming to America, you should honestly research Trump and see what he's been about. He and the Pope have been working together. Uh, uh, Trump has been talking about Sunday and uh, the day of rest and, and all this kind of stuff. This is this is what it's leading to. So this is what Kanye is backing. We saw it uh, earlier that, he, again, he said that, that Rome has all the answers. Rome is the Silicon Valley of humanity. Um, so... Again, we see here that Trump, uh, Trump, you know, is working with the Pope. I mean, just he is. Um, they're they're in cahoots. If you don't think that we're in a time and place where all the world leaders uh, are, you know, united w with the enemy, then you haven't read Revelation, where all the the, the world comes together. And, um, anyways, so let's see what else did I want to show about this. You know, in in speaking of. Um, you know the the mark of the beast in and Sunday. Let's take a look at this real quick. Let me take let's take a look at a couple of verses. I'm gonna close a couple of tabs. Hang on. Stand by. Okay, so let's start with Deuteronomy five through um, Deuteronomy six five through eight. Uh, and thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And we know that Yeshua quoted this as being, you know, one of the greatest commandments. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So this is talking about the the law, the Torah, the commandments. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So the Most High says that we are to focus on the commandments, focus on the law. And when people say, you know, we need to focus on Jesus, well, Jesus, Yeshua, is the law. He is everything. He's the Word, right? And the Word isn't just Matthew through Revelation or Romans through Philemon. It's it's the whole Word. It's all of it, including the Torah, which, again, he quoted himself. He quoted Deuteronomy 5 himself as being one of the greatest commandments. And now listen to this. And this is talking about the commandments. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. So the commandments are supposed to be a sign on our hand and frontlets between our eyes. What's between our eyes? Our forehead. Now, does that coincide with the mark of the beast? Absolutely. Listen to this. Revelation 13, 16 through 17. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their foreheads. Well, there it is again. Your hand and your forehead. Is that a coincidence? Don't think so. Now listen to this. This is where it gets really interesting. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Is it interesting that on the Sabbath that we're not supposed to buy or sell? And it says that nobody can buy or sell unless they have the mark. So well, now we're talking about two different marks, two different uh, marks. We're either having the mark of the Most High by keeping His commands and doing it His way, or we have the mark of the beast by doing it their way. Let's go a little further. Ezekiel twenty twelve. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they may know that I, Yahuwah, am, I'm sorry, that I am Yahuwah that sanctify them. So the Sabbath is a sign. And we saw earlier that Sunday was the, the mark of the Catholic Church, that they, they literally did it. They changed Sabbath. They changed the Sabbath from, you know, from what we call Saturday, the seventh day, to Sunday, the first day. Exodus 31, 13, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations. And if you don't understand that you uh, are a, that you who are a believer in Messiah, Yeshua, that you're uh, not Israel, then you've got a couple of things to study. Um, take a look at Isaiah 41, 8, and Galatians 3, 27 through 29. You are Israel, you who believe in Messiah, Yeshua, that you may know that I am Yahuwah that does sanctify you. And just a couple more. Exodus 31, 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days, Yahuwah made the heaven and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. Anyone can tell you. You look at a calendar, any calendar, even the Gregorian calendar, right? That is, you know, from the Catholic Church. But they can't change the days of the week. They can change, you know, how the calendar operates and, you know, when the new year starts and all that kind of stuff. But they can't change the seventh day. That is not in their power to do that. The seventh day has always been the seventh day. They haven't changed that. Um, so you look at any calendar, Saturday is the seventh day, 
And this is what the Most High says. On the seventh day, he rested. And the Catholic Church, the beast of Revelation, whom Kanye West is uh, supporting, is all talking about the first day, Sunday, what they call the Lord's Day. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, this is getting repetitive, but you know we, we have to look at these. Ezekiel 20, 20, and hallow my Sabbaths, that they shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. So this is what, this is what it all comes down to, honestly, is do you have the mark? Are you going to have, when all this goes down, are you going to have the mark of the Most High by keeping His commandments and keeping His Shabbat? It's part of the Ten Commandments. You know, and again, like Justin and I said earlier, Kanye West isn't the major problem. It's the, the church's doctrine that has gone from the truth that Messiah Yeshua preached and the apostles to, you know, here we go, or thousands of years later, almost 2,000 years later, to, I mean, what's, what's being preached? It's, being, it's a lukewarm doctrine that is of the world. Um, what else did I want to show you? Let's see here. Oh, there's a couple more things, actually, on that video. A um, couple more reference points. So we just talked about it, uh, yeah, this, that he wanted to be closed on Sunday. Uh, now we'll also see that he is a, um, he um, supports this whole climate change thing, which that, uh, that encyclical I was just showing you from the Pope, it's all about climate change, all of it. That's what it's all, the whole theme was. And that's why it eventually talked about Sunday and the day of rest. Uh, and, and brothers and sisters, this is marching us right to the mark of the beast, which is the Sunday law and those that, uh, that go along with it. So, here we're going to talk about, they're going to be, th th right now they're talking about Greta Thurn Thurnberg. This is that Swedish girl, that 16-year-old Swedish girl, or Finland, I don't know, wherever she's from. Um, and this is what they say. We have, and we have different approaches to how we live our life. Yeah. But one thing you said earlier on, which I do totally relate to, which I love, is we're trying to leave the world in a better place for the people that matter to us, our kids. Our kids. And, and if you're too young to have kids, you're trying to make the world a better place for yourself. And she may be in a situation where it's expected of her now, but I do think Greta Thunberg at one point was on that list, having a 16-year-old kid from Sweden coming out and putting everything on hold and saying what she believed in. And climate change does concern me, and I do think it's a fucking issue. And I think the fact that she came out and did that was huge. And now it's like, oh, that's culturally accepted because she has an army of kids behind her, but at the time she was one kid. She's the only person who stood out in the street and did that. Mm -hmm. on her own. Do you know how many times I've walked down the street when I've been felt so frustrated about that and thought, what if I just stop what I'm doing and stand out in the middle of a street in Los Angeles with a placard, would anyone join me, right? I'm sure I'm not alone in feeling that way. And it feels overwhelming. Like what change is it really gonna make? She just showed us up. She did that on her own. Mm -hmm. Started with one person. That was beautiful. And it's beautiful. So that's what Kanye's opinion of, of you know, Greta Thunberg and, and climate change. This is, this is all worldly stuff, brothers and sisters. And this is all stuff that we, this is one-on-one -on -one stuff, learning about the, the, the climate change hoax and um, what that's going to lead to. And again, this whole climate change thing is going to be the poster child for this Sunday law, which is the whole world, like how much better will the world be if we had, you know, everything rested, no cars, no nothing. That's, that's how they're going to paint this as a good thing. And again, this man that a lot of people are defending, he is defending this climate change falsity. Let's take a look at a couple more clips from here. And uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll start right here. Uh, I want you to listen to this. And, and, and again, we're supposed to judge each other by our fruits, what comes out of our mouth. And again, this was just a little over a week ago. Rivalry. For oh, right, 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 right. Now, liberals love art, mm -hmm. right? And now... I am unquestionably, undoubtedly, the greatest human artist of all time. It's just not even a question anymore at this point. It's just a fact, right? So, for the greatest art... So, that is not humility, that's not humbleness, that's, uh, that's being boastful, prideful. This is... Everything is opposite of the fruits of the well spirit. Said, and uh, just last point, uh, I thought it was also interesting that he said that he specifically said the greatest human uh, artist. So uh, we, you know, <laughs> you can take that for what it is. And, and, and like Justin said in part one, very very well, is that uh, you know Satan. Satan was chief of music in heaven. His body literally had like pipes and timbrels coming out of it. Uh, so Satan knows exactly. Uh, 
how music works. He knows how the how the human brain and the ear works and the subconscious and all this kind of stuff. So he knows what he's doing. Uh, while you know, while he was incredibly dumb for trying to rise up above the Most High and to be like the Most High, uh, he is a lot more intelligent than you and I in in a, in a, you know in a worldly sense as far as living in this world that you know that he currently has uh, that he reigns over. So, uh, again, like we said in part one, you know, what what would Satan come like, uh, you know, with a pitchfork and dressed in red, or, you know, would he appear to be uh, on our side? So, uh, just something to think about. Uh, one more point I want to make here on this video, and then uh, really just want to show just a couple of clippings, and we can finish this up tonight, uh, is, uh, let's see, we're 37, right around here, actually. Give me just a second. I'm going to fix the audio, Justin, so you can hear it. Listen in. Yeah, they keep saying that you still have an echo, so I don't know. Well, that's just how this is going to be. This is what it is. Okay, let's listen in here. Was the king, or is it, is it uh, Babylon? Mm -hmm. no, wait, wait. Okay, let's talk about that. You, you, you say it, okay. No, I get it, I get it. And God is changing. God is using me. Mm -hmm. God is using... Hold on, first he said God is changing. We know that we know that Yahuwah the Most High never changes. It's actually in Malachi 4, somewhere in there, it says that he never changes, ever. Me, to show off, I believe. He like, you know, God is, is similar to... He's saying he wanted the loudest voice and the, and the, the one who made the most noise. To, to, to make the most impact? Yeah, he wanted to show off. He's like, now, now let me take uh -huh. this, let me take this Nebuchadnezzar type character. Nebuchadnezzar was the king, or is it, is it uh, Babylon? Mm -hmm. ne Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. And he looked at his entire kingdom and said, I did this, and God. So it's really interesting, actually, that uh, he mentions uh, that he believes he's a Nebuchadnezzar type of uh, person. Uh, let's see, where is it? I don't know if I have, I'll just look it up real quick. It's Daniel 3. And it's interesting uh, of that passage in Daniel 3 that, uh, here we go. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. And we know that this is a precursor to the end times. We know that the beast will set up his image and that uh, those that don't submit to that image uh, will be killed. Then the princes, the governors, the captains, the judges, the uh yeah, the the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me, the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. So this is like the whole world, right? The na people, O people, nations, and languages. And this is what's going to happen in the end times. This is all precursor stuff of the end times. That w at that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down in worship shall at the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So it's interesting that, uh, no coincidence, coincidences in this world, that Kanye, a musician, is talking, actually, talks about himself being a Nebuchadnezzar figure, uh, which that's very interesting in itself. But he's a musician pushing this agenda, marching people towards this Sunday law, towards this Sunday worship. Uh, and we know that, that that worship, that Sunday worship is part of the mark of the beast. And it's interesting that, you know, that it talks about how musicians are the ones that uh, that start that, um, that start this, uh, this bowing down to this uh, image. So, Coincidence, maybe, but like uh, like we said before, there's no word for coincidence in the Hebrew language, and uh, more often than not, we're finding that, that is just not the case. So just interesting stuff. Um, but uh, just a couple of the things, like we said in part one, when the world embraces something, 
it's probably something that we shouldn't uh, shouldn't go towards. So he's his Sunday services, and again, it's not just not it's not called church. It's not called worship service. It's called Sunday service. The headline, the fr- the the headline about his whole movement is Sunday, 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 Sunday. This is his whole deal. Uh, it's talking about how this is a star-studded event. You know, let's look at some of the people here. Well, we know that the the Jenners would be there because of you know, um, um, what's her name, his wife. Um, whatever her name is, uh, Travis Scott, Kylie Jenner, Travis Scott, of course, uh, Tiana Taylor, Chance the Rapper, Justin Bieber, and Jaden Smith. I mean, come on, brothers and sisters. This is this is of the world. Idris Elba and Sabrina uh, Elba, DMX, Brad Pitt. I mean, brothers and sisters, it doesn't get much more worldly than Brad Pitt. And in, in, in uh, an interview, I'm not going to show, but in an interview, uh, when someone was asking Brad Pitt about Kanye's service, his thing was, it's, you know, it's, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, he's bringing people together. And that's this whole thing, is this oneness, this, um, you know, forsaking the truth uh, for, you know, in the spirit of bringing people together. And that's, that's not what we're supposed to be doing, brothers and sisters. Uh, and he says, and that's, all, that's not all. West Sunday service has attracted the likes of soon-to-be newlyweds Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom and Courtney Love. I mean, Katy Perry is like outright satanic. She's another person that said, that admitted uh, that she sold her soul to the devil. Um, Dave Chappelle. So, again, brothers and sisters, this is the marching of the world. Uh, we know also know that Pharrell Williams is a part of this as well. Uh, I'm not going to play this song, but I want to show you something. You know, here's Pharrell at the one, the Global Citizen Festival, uh, wearing a shirt that, well, here it is, Sunday. This seems to be the whole theme of this whole movement is Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, he's, <laughs> his song is, it said the lyrics are like, uh, first name is free, last name is dumb. Well, it's kind of interesting, but um, he's associating Sunday with freedom. The the Pope actually himself, this is the, the former Pope, but we know that um, we know that these Popes all have the same agenda. It's been the same agenda for thousands of years, but this is uh, the previous Pope, um, Pope Benedict. He said that Sunday must be a day of rest for everyone. This is this is their goal, brothers and sisters, is this Sunday law, this Sunday worship, so people can be free to be with their families and with God. The Pope said, by, dis, by defending Sunday, one defends human freedom, he said. So I'm not going to go through the rest of this, but this is, this is what the world is marching towards, brothers and sisters. A um, couple, last couple things, you know, in looking uh, through his lyrics, uh, on the song Selah, he said, they say the weak start on Monday, but the strong start on Sunday. That's in Kanye's lyrics of his new album. He's pushing this whole agenda, brothers and sisters. And those of you that maybe just be joining us now live, uh, at the first part of this, we went through the Apple um, interview, and he said that Rome has all the answers for humanity. It's the Silicon Valley uh, for humanity. Uh, in, fo- in the song Follow God, uh, he says, looking for a bright light, a sigil, what's your life like? If you want to look up what a sigil is, uh, it's not good. It has to do with witchcraft and, and uh, all kinds of other stuff. The sigil has nothing to do with the scriptures. Um, you know, closed on Sunday. The whole song is Sunday worship, and it, honestly, it's prepping for Sunday law. Um, so, anyways, um, I think uh, well, just a couple of things, actually because it was actually on the thumbnail. If you look at Kanye's Sunday service, it's uh, it's actually modeled after, you can see right here, this is New Age, New Age, New Age Rainbow Gathering. This is New Age stuff, and his whole Sunday service gatherings are modeled after this. You'll see that the inner circle here, and then you have these uh, outer circles like this. Uh, it's no coincidence, brothers and sisters. This is what is going on with this man. Um... Uh, someone sent me this. I don't think this is really, you know. There it is. I'm fit, I told. I told. Um, him. But you know, and this is his family on uh, on Halloween, and you know, no wonder because all of Christianity is all ate up with Halloween, anyways. Oh, I'm sorry. These nasty images. I don't want y'all to see this. 
Okay. Um, you know, I mean, almost every single church has like a like a Halloween, uh, what do they call it, trunk or treats or whatever. So we know that the church, the lukewarm church, the the apostate church, is fully in acceptance with Halloween, and um, you know, no wonder that uh, this man is also. Yeah, there. Hang on. So we went over a lot of interesting stuff in part one and part two. Uh, what are your What are your final thoughts, my brother? Man, uh, well, you know, I, it's again. Uh, I think in part one we we covered off just all the reasons to get us started in why it's important for us to actually question everything. Uh, why we see it, it is a biblical principle for us to be cognizant of uh, of people's past, and we saw how even Paul himself was feared. And uh, people wanted to test his fruit and see what he was going to do before they, the disciples actually accepted him. Um, and specifically, as it pertains to the uh, the the specific actions that Kanye took, Kanye took leading up to this to now, uh, they are relevant because of the type of actions they were. And so you got to check that out if you haven't seen it yet already. Uh, but ultimately, we all know who the world is in control controlled by. Uh, it just still. I'm looking at the chat, and some people are showing up here. Probably haven't seen much except I think they're just popping in and making comments. But it's it's almost it's almost sad to me to see how many people still really think that um, the news agencies, the music industry, the television industry is going to promote the actual Messiah and his actual uh, salvation instead of a deception. They they actually think that. Uh, this is organic and natural and real and um, something that we can we can all celebrate. When in fact we know who the God of this world is, uh, we know who the God of the industries are, and we know that all of this is calculated. And we can see that through the proof of what has been said and what has been shown, again, all in part one. And now to dissect in, in this video, just going through some of the things that he has, himself is saying now right. and uh, what he's participating in now and who's being involved now it's just confirmation of, of the concerns we had in part one. Um, it, it is ecumenical. It, it's a universalist type of uh, concept. I saw him saying uh, at one of his uh, rallies, one of his Sunday services, he said, um, if you guys, if, we, if you know that Jesus died for your sins, that's it. That's the gospel. That's right. all you need to know. Right. Um, and we know that that's, that is not the whole gospel. That is not all you need to know. Um, there's... There's quite a bit more to it. There's no context with that. You know, it'd be like uh, me giving good news about m my business. Um, let's say if I if I owned a business like uh, in the car industry, and I and I I told someone outside of my industry the good news that this certain part has arrived. Um, they don't know what that means. You're telling people something they don't even know what it means. You're telling them that this man, Jesus Christ, which that's not even his name, and that's part of the confusion, by the way. Right. Uh, we didn't even has come, that. Yeah, has come and died for their sins, but they don't know who he is. They don't know what he represents, what he taught, why he died, why he was resurrected. They don't understand the truth, the whole matter. They have a very small sliver of truth, and uh, even that sliver is distorted at that. So I just wanted to, uh, again, uh, thank everybody for the patience on the stream, especially part two of the stream is kind of, uh, you know, we had some issues with audio and, and uh, getting started again here. Um, and just encourage you guys to keep your eyes wide open. If something is launched onto the, 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 the world's sudden consciousness, if everyone's now talking about Kanye, and we're not talking about small little channels, and we're talking about Apple Music is promoting Kanye, ABC is promoting Kanye, uh, you know, Jimmy Kimmel's show is promoting Kanye. Disney. Uh, Disney is promoting Kanye. Def Jam Records is promoting Kanye. Uh, Universal Music is promoting Kanye. Now you start to see, you, you have to ask yourself, why? And that is what we're doing tonight uh, or today. And so uh, thanks for joining us. But obviously we're going to see, uh, we're going to see what happens down the line. And just wanted to also uh, remind everyone that it is our hope, it is our sincere hope that someone like Kanye and even Kanye himself would come to the truth. And he would come 
and truly repent and sh sh truly show forth fruits that are in keeping, that are meet for repentance. And, um, and stop promoting materialism. Stop promoting vanity. I mean, Kanye right now is telling people to support his ministry by buying expensive clothing items from his uh, vain store. $270 sweatshirts, you know, and, and $2,500 shoes. And, you know, it's just and, then, and these, these are not, these are things that promote just vanity, just materialism. They're not, they don't have like, you know, good messages that are uplifting and important to people. It's, it's just vanity and materialism. It's the same stuff he's been selling uh, through Yeezy, his, his company. He actually has more money and more influence through his fashion side of things than he even does in music. Most people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot there, a lot to digest. But my prayer is that we could all use a little more discernment, a little more uh, discretion, and be slower to, believe it or not, People think that we're being very judgmental right now in a very ne and there's they're going to think that and say that in a very negative way. But I, I, I like to flip that around a little bit and ask you if you're being judgmental because you have already judged him righteous. But we're told that we're we will know someone by their fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, Yahusha said, "You'll know you know who loves me if you follow me if you keep my commandments." Um, Yahusha says that people will think that they know him on the day of judgment, and he will say, "I don't know you." So it is important that the entirety of the gospel is preached, that people really know what it means to know him, what it really means to love him, and define those things by scripture, because those things are defined as our willful obedience, our submission. We die to self, we put aside all the ways of our past life, and we focus on following the instructions of the Most High, uh, restored to us and empowered in us through the Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach. And that's all. Well said, brother. Well, well said. And... Um I want to pull up some scripture really quickly. Hang on. That uh, you brought up a great point when he says, and the, on on that day, um, actually, I, when he says, uh, I never knew, I, I believe that's that day where, you know, people go into New Jerusalem or don't. And you're right, he says to a lot of people, uh, he says, many will come to me that day saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this and didn't we do that? And he says, away from me, uh, I never knew you. Depart, you worker of iniquity. And you look at that uh, Greek word iniquity, it's anomia, means lawlessness, people that uh, did not follow the law. And that's why it's, you know, it is important to know, you know, what the what really the whole gospel is, which isn't just believing in a historical figure named Jesus, which, you know, we believe his, his real name is Yeshua HaMashiach or Yahusha HaMashiach. Um, and that actually brings up a point, uh, but I, I want to show you something real quick. 1 John 2, 3 through 6, actually, is what I want to look up. Let me do a quick screen share. Hang on. So in First John two three through six, we can say, you know, religion can say, uh, you know, we know Messiah by saying a prayer or believing in Him. That's not actually what the scriptures say. It says here, First John two three through six, and hereby we do know that we know Him. So this is basically saying, this is how you know that you know Him, if we keep His commandments. He that saith I know Him and keepeth not His commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So that's why it's really important to know the full truth and not just a watered-down apostate doctrine. Now listen, but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of Elohim perfected, and hereby know we that we are in him. This is a direct reflection to Romans 8. Those that are in Messiah are not in condemnation. And again, how do we do that? By keeping his word, by keeping his commandments. And then lastly, he that saith he abideth in him, so he who says he's in Messiah, in Christ, ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. And how did Messiah walked? He walked in full obedience uh, to that. But uh, one other thing, actually, in, it was actually in Second John, which I fairly rarely read. Um, actually, I want to pull this up in... Um, uh, let's see, hang on. Well, I'll pull it up here. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not, and we know his name isn't Jesus Christ, it's Yeshua HaMashiach, or other, you know, pronounced Yahusha HaMashiach, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, this is a deceiver and an antichrist. So, you know, is it important to know what his true name is? 
I think we're starting to come to a point where I actually I actually believe that, Justin. I wasn't in that crowd before. I just thought that, you know, uh, hold on, let me just switch over. You know, I think you and I both were both in the same camp where it's like, hey, you know, we we just want to abide in truth. We know that his name when he walked on this earth wasn't Jesus Christ. We know that uh, Yeshua didn't. Oh, are you okay? It uh, didn't properly, uh, tra- you know, didn't properly translate into Aesus, which is a completely bastardized way of of translating into the Greek. Then you take that Greek name Aesus and then translate into English. You get Jesus has no relation, no bearing upon his true name, and um, you know we're living we're living in the days where truth is being revealed, and we're not in an age of ignorance anymore. Maybe our uh, grandparents' generation, or great great grandparents, or even hundreds of years ago, a thousand, they were in ignorance and truth wasn't being revealed then. So that's them. We don't live in that age. We don't live in an age of ignorance anymore. Uh, it's only willful ignorance and, and, and willful, um, yeah, willful ignorance, you know, to, to continue in that path of, of falsity. And uh, Psalm 104 states, you know, by thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Long story short, I, I do believe that we're in a time where his true name has been revealed, and you're either going to embrace it or you're going to reject it. And I think that has something to do with these false signs and wonders that it said that the Antichrist spirit would be able to do. Um, and, you know, when people make the argument, I've seen, you know, miracles done in the name of Jesus, well, you know, maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. But I know you got something to say, Justin. Yeah. No, I just wanted to... to, uh, to um, confirm what you just said and, and just say, I'm with you on that. I believe that that is, that is true and very important. And I, I think there's two ways we can look at it. And I think, um, I, I'm not sure if one's more important than the other, but in the one sense, we, we make an attempt to look at the, the earliest, uh, translations of the Hebrew and we make an attempt to enunciate and pronounce the name of the most high. It says in scripture, that he loves people who ponder on his name, right? And people who stand for his name, who who are willing to be persecuted for his name. And actually, uh, I lo- I'm going to be doing a, a, a study on First Peter over the next week because it talks specifically about our current environment. Um, so there's that side of it. Yes, his name his name was not Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, guys. It just it just straight up isn't. It was Yahusha Hamashiach. Uh, some, there's some argument there. Some people think it's Yahushua. Some say Yahuwah Shai. But it's definitely not Jesus Christ. And that name, Jesus Christ, can be used by anyone who wants to use it. Um, but more importantly, probably, maybe not more importantly, but on the same level, I think, is we're told that when he returns, that his name is called the Word of Yahuwah. His name is called the Word of Elohim. So... That, tr- that really is the, the meat of, of the issue here. When, we, when I say we don't know his name, people don't know his name, I'm, I'm, te- I'm speaking less to uh, the way they enunciate uh, their Yahuwahs and Yahushas. That is super important. I think that's important. I pray that way. It's blessed me. But I mean, he is the word. His name is the word of Yahuwah. His name is the word of Elohim. That means if you want to know his name, you have to know the word. Amen. Great if you want to, if you want to follow him, you have to follow the word. He's the word made flesh. He came to restore the word to a lost world, a lost nation that had been so corrupted, so skewed off the original path that y'all intended. That Yahusha came at a perfect time to set things straight, and we know that what he was teaching came straight out of the word. It wasn't new. It was new to them at that time. But now that we have the word, we see. We can read Proverbs and the prophets ourselves. We can see. That it wasn't new. He was restoring what was already there. So uh, what's, that's what we're called to do: is is uh, find the ancient path and walk it. And we're seeing that that the importance of truly knowing the word and having a hunger for the word and and being bathed in the word, how extremely important it's going to be to ensuring that we are not deceived. And that is beginning. It already has. It began a long time ago, but now it's beginning to really show its its face. So, right, that's it. Thank you guys for joining us. Shalom. Thanks, brother. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that's uh, 
that's a good good uh, way to wrap it up. So, brothers and sisters, thanks for joining us. Um, uh, you know, for those of you that maybe may have just popped in here for part two, please uh, maybe start back at part one. I think, uh, Justin, I think I might actually um, download both of these and kind of combine it into one as well, and then maybe you can re-upload it on Christian Truthers as well if you'd like. But um, sorry for the technical difficulties, but hey, no wonder with such a sensitive subject um, kind of exposing um, the the doings of the world and how they're deceiving um, you know, our, even our brothers and our, our, even our called out assembly brothers and sisters that uh, you know have understood these truths and have been truthers and understood you know who runs the world and this is why again why we felt it so important to talk about these things because uh, this movement is even deceiving those that um, you know have understood some of these things in, in times past but brothers and sisters thanks for joining us uh, we love you and um, we'll uh, we'll see you soon Shalom.